Okay, this video is to show you how to work the fourth or mastery level of DC node equations in Circuit Tutor. So as always, I recommend looking at an example. Um, so there's a couple things that are new on this level compared to the previous levels. Um, we still have uh, super nodes, but we now have dependent sources. So you will have to deal with a dependent source, which means you have to also write a control variable for the dependent source. That is the variable in this case, ix, the current, that actually controls that source. We need to have an explicit equation for that, otherwise we won't have enough equations because that ix is going to appear in the value of that current source that comes into these other equations, like uh, here for example. Um, and if we don't have an equation for it, then we won't be able to solve. Um, Another new thing is the nature of the SOT variables. So here it's actually asking you to find the current through a voltage source. And you say, what is the current through a voltage source? Well, it's whatever it needs to be. And therefore we don't know just a priori what that will be. However, we can compute it by using KCL um, on one side of that source. We basically make a surface um, that allows us to compute that by virtue of the other currents uh, leaving that node, for example. So, um, in the case of I0, um, it's actually pretty easy in this case because we could do it either on this side where we have two currents to evaluate. Um, the current coming in this way and the current coming in that way would add to this current. Or the easier way is actually to do it on this side where there's just a single element in series with that one volt source. And so finding the, the current going this way through the 9 ohm also has to be the current through the one volt source because they're in series and therefore by definition have the same current. So that actually ends up being fairly simple in that case. It's just that it involves a different element than the one that we're calculating it for. But another alternative approach would be to use these, which is a little bit more complicated. Um, then the other thing, it's asking for the power absorbed by a dependent source. Um, and in this case, that's going to be the current times the voltage. But because it's absorbed power, we want to have the uh, passive sign convention, and so we need to know the voltage basically drop that the current is flowing into. So that the plus sign would be here, the minus sign would be here, and so that voltage basically is zero minus V3, so that's why it's a negative V3 multiplied by the value of the current. So the tricky part there is usually the, um, as always, is the polarity of the thing. Um, and then there's also a super node here. Um, so let's see, we have um, actually uh, two different super nodes in this case. So we have one for the four volt source, at least with this default positioning of the ground. Um, so there we have the currents exiting that one. Um, and that's what's being shown here. And then for this is an ordinary node that doesn't have a voltage source connected. So there we just have the four currents. But the next one is also going to be a super node. So the combination of nodes four and five are connected by a one volt source. So that again becomes a super node, and we have to consider the, the uh, currents leaving sort of a closed surface here that surrounds both nodes rather than just one node. And so that would give us these three terms for these uh, color-coded things here. And uh, so that's basically the example. And also there are new explanations available for dependent sources. Um, can give you a little bit more detail on that if you have trouble to understand a dependent source and also control variable equations, how you write those, that's discussed in this little uh, additional piece of help that's available. And of course, I'll also discuss it in this video. And then the constraint equations, the KCL equations, those can also be explained. So that's the example. Now we're gonna work a problem. So as always, remember that in nodal analysis, if you don't pick a reference node, you simply can't solve the problem. So it's kind of a good idea, obviously, to pick a reference node so that you can solve the problem. And usually we want one tied to a voltage source that'll reduce the number of super nodes we need. I mean, you don't have to do that. Um, you could put it up here where there's more elements connected, I suppose. Um, and well, what the heck, why don't I just do that? Okay, and it, it'll tell me that's maybe not the best, but really it's probably not so bad here. Okay, so we're done. And now we're gonna do voltage constraint equations before um, we do the other things. Then we'll do the current control variable equations and the KCL equations last. Actually, the, the SOT variable equations probably be good to do those early too. Okay, so the voltage constraint equations are for each voltage source, as always. So for the one volt source, um, we see that connects nodes four and five. So that'll be a difference in node voltages and that's gonna be equal to the one volt. And that will uh, basically be V5 minus V4 
because v5 is the plus side, v4 is the minus side, as you can see here. So it would be that difference, and that's the constraint equation. Okay, and in this hard level, it doesn't tell you how many equations of each type. You're going to need to figure that out for yourself. So it's getting a little bit more challenging here uh, for a number of reasons. Okay, then uh, for the 7 volt source, um, again, that's the difference of node voltages. So that would be equal to the 7 volts value of the source. And we see the plus side is V3, and the negative side is V2. So it would be V3 minus V2 is going to be the 7 volt value. That's the polarity of the source. So that's correct now. Um, now let's do the control variable equation for the dependent source. So we see this dependent source, the diamond thing here, is controlled by this variable Vx, which is the voltage across this 2 ohm resistor. So we need to write an equation for Vx in terms of node voltages, basically. So we choose, in the drop down here, we choose control variable equation. And we want to write it for Vx, so that would be our term there. And that's going to be equal to, basically, it's one end of that is connected to ground, so it'll just be one voltage. And I fill in the x there, where the alpha, remember, alpha stands for letters, so we put a letter in there, Vx. And then it's going to be um, V4 is the one that's not the reference voltage. And so basically, Vx is equal to 0 minus V4, so we need a minus sign there. And that'll be the correct form for that equation. Now, um, the SOT variable equations are actually maybe not so simple in this circuit, but let's do them anyway. So let's do the current now through a voltage source. And that's a SOT branch current. And again, this does happen to be in series here with a single resistor. So we're kind of in luck there. We don't have to do it on this side, which would be a little bit more complicated. We could add this current flowing this way to this one flowing this way, that would have to, by KCL, that would have to equal the current going in there. So that's one way to do it. Um, but a simpler way is to just evaluate the current going this way through this resistor. So there's usually two choices there about how to do it. So let's pick the easier way. And that will be a simple uh, Ohm's Law type of expression. So it's basically 0 minus V5. So I have a minus sign here. And then a V5 divided by the resistance, which of course is the 7 ohms. And that will be the current flowing in this direction, which is the direction that I naught goes, right, to be consistent. So that should be correct. And then we have another SOT variable, which is the power absorbed by the six Siemens VX source. Remember, Siemens is the unit of conductance. That's a reciprocal of an ohm, the capital S there, not to be confused with lowercase s, which is seconds. OK, so that power, we need a SOT branch power. So we select that from the drop-down menu, and it's going to remind us that there's actually three pallets of terms here. Um, so we'll need the variable itself equal to, and now we have to think about that. Well, it's going to be always a voltage times a current for a source, So because there is no resistance, after all, of a, of a source. Um, so the voltage is going to be V1 minus V2, and the current is just this value. So I don't see that anywhere here, so we look for another palette, and um, well, this is the right term here. That's for power of a voltage controlled current source not connected to ground. That's what we need. So since we want the absorbed power, we need to use the passive sign convention and to have, in order to have a plus sign here, which is the easiest thing. So the passive sign convention means the current flows into the plus side of this voltage. So we're going to make this the plus side and this the minus side, which means we take V1 minus V2 as opposed to V2 minus V1. So V1 minus V2, and then it's, of course, 6 Siemens, and then the variable is Vx. So we just have to fill in all those blanks, and that should be the absorbed power for that. So let's check that, and indeed, um, I got that correct. So now we'll go to writing the KCL equations. And, of course, we can only do that for nodes uh, that are not connected to a uh, voltage source, and we don't do it for the reference node, so we don't have to do it here, but let's do it for V1. Well, V1 is not connected to a voltage source, so we can write a simple KCL equation for that, and we're going to need um, a resistor connected to ground. That'll be this term. A resistor is not connected to ground, which is this term, and then the current through this voltage-controlled current source which is of this form, and we look here, and that's going to be that. And then those sum to zero by KCL. So we have V1 divided by the 8 ohms. That's, I'm sorry, 8 ohms, which is the current going here. Then for this current going here, 
that would be v1 minus v4. Again, using passive sign convention as always for these currents, and that's divided by the six ohms. And then this current is indeed leaving that node. I remember I'm I usually like to sum currents that leave a node. I mean, you can sum currents that enter a node if you want, but it's just going to give you the negative of the whole equation, so it really doesn't matter. Okay, and then, so this one is actually leaving, so that will have a plus sign, and so that will be 6 Siemens times Bx. And that's that KCL equation uh, for uh, node 1. So now let's look at node 2. Uh, well, node 2 is connected to a voltage source, so we can't do a KCL equation for it. And same thing for node 3, because it's connected to a voltage source, we don't know the current through that voltage source. We can, however, combine them into a supernode connected by that voltage source. So let's do that and write a KCL equation for this supernode that's defined by this surface here that I'm outlining. Okay, So we're going to need a current of that type for the dependent source. We're going to have a resistor connected to ground for this one and then a resistor, another resistor connected to ground, so we have another one of those, and all that sums to zero. So we're adding currents that leave, so this current is actually entering this time, so it's going to have a minus sign in this equation, minus 6 Siemens times Vx, and then the current going this way, well that's just V2 minus zero over one, so that's just V2 basically divided by one ohm, and then the current going this way to ground is going to be V3 minus 0, or in other words just V3, divided by the 5 ohms. And that will be the sum of the three currents leaving that supernode, so that should be good, and indeed it is accepted. Now let's look at node 4. Well again that's connected to a um, voltage source, so we're going to have to actually combine nodes 4 and 5, neither one of which we can write a KCL equation for by themselves, but we can again combine them into a supernode. Now had I put the ground maybe on up here for example, we'd only have one supernode to deal with, but it really doesn't matter. Um, it's probably just as easy to do this. So now I have three currents leaving that supernode here, here, and here. And don't let that current confuse you because that direction of that arrow, remember, is just a reference direction. It doesn't mean the current's actually flowing that way. Okay, so now this current will be a difference of node voltages, and this one is going to ground, so it needs that form, and then this one is also going to ground, so it needs that form again, and those three will sum to zero for this supernode consisting of nodes four and five. Okay, so the first uh, current going this way will be V4 minus V1 divided by the resistor in question, which is the six ohm resistor, so that's this current. Then the V4 minus zero over two, that's just V4 divided by two, and then this current leaving, again, this supernode will be V5 minus zero, so that's just V5, divided by the resistance, which is seven ohms. And so that would be the second supernode equation. And now um, we have written basically all the equations that we need. We can count those up if you like, but those are enough for the number of unknowns. Um, so we have basically um, five unknown node voltages, we have a control variable and a SOT current. So there's seven variables in total, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, eight, I'm sorry, we have two SOT variables because of the power. So we actually have eight equations for eight unknowns, uh, including the power, and that, of course, is uh, indeed workable. So we're done writing equations, and it simply tells us we're done, and we have one more problem to do at this level. Um, and it will also give us a detailed explanation um, if we like that. So again, you can look at that, all the explanations. I'm going to skip this for right now. Um, I'm also going to work the other type of problem. It's a little bit different on this level. Um, I'm not going to work it completely, but let's just show you the basic things. I'm going to place a ground connected to some voltage sources. That'll make this easier. And what I really want to show you is just the SOT variable. Those are the things that are really significantly different here. Um, so the V0, that's a voltage um, across a current source. And you say, well, how do you find the voltage across a current source? We know it's whatever it needs to be. So normally you'd think that would be hard to find, but actually in nodal, anal nodal analysis, it's actually easy because this voltage is just a difference of node voltages, isn't it? So if we 
uh, write an equation for that SOT voltage, V0 is just equal to the difference of V2 minus V3. Because V2 is the positive side of that voltage, V3 is the minus. So that's actually quite simple. It may look confusing, but it's actually simple. In mesh analysis, um, that would be harder to find. But in neural analysis, it's quite easy. Then the other one is the power dissipated in the 6 ohm resistor. Well, that one's really not too hard, but let's do it. Um, Okay, so that's equal to, in this case, the 6 ohm resistor is a difference of node voltages. So we just use the V squared over R idea here. So that's just going to be V3 minus V4. Or you could put it the other way around. Is it squared? Of course, it doesn't matter about the polarity in this case, divided by 6 ohms. And of course, this is always going to be a plus sign for power dissipated in the resistor, unlike power of the source, which might have a minus sign there. Um, so the rest of the problem is similar to the other one that I just worked. Um, so I'm going to skip that in the interest of time here and let you get down to working the problems yourself.